change in there. Hi, Willie Kelly here. Glad, glad to see you. Glad to be here. Um, this is my third, third video week. I'm a little late this week, um, but we'll see if I can be consistent over time. I think, uh, right now, I think on the channel, this is under the heading of, uh, Willie today, but you know what? It's not about today. I try to live in the moment. I try to live one day at a time, and I do for the most part, but um, I do every day, actually. But um, I think what I'm going to do is maybe call this little series I've been doing uh, My Week with a Guitar, because it's who knows what I'm going to talk about. I'll tell you first, let me uh, not spend too much time, but I had a great gig uh, this last week down at... Uh, in Camden, Maine, and it was a birthday party. There was a lot of people there, and it was a, a nice setting, and and uh, it was great. It was a lot of people that I've known since I was, you know, 20, 21, 19, you know, people that I'd met and have known over the years, and, uh, and it was kind of a little bit like a reunion, you know, for this birthday party, and, and it was very fun, and I playing in a little trio. I'm in Cafe Days, which is Joe Allard and Jeff Densmore, for those of you that are around, around here. And, and um, it was fun. It was really good. And uh, people were very kind. There were a couple old guys. Uh, I say old guys. I doubt they were any older than I am. But they were admiring my pedal board. And uh, I wound up, uh, you know, I was talking to them. Well, what's this do? How's that work? Before we got started. And uh, and I finally had to admit that my pedal board is kind of my hobby at this point. I put money into it and take time and I've got, it's a MIDI pedal board and I've got all these pedals and I swear at that gig, I didn't hit too many buttons and I, you know, I've had years where a wire would go bad. I'd have old pedals on the floor in front of me and I'd get mad and I'd just, I'm in the middle of a gig and it's like, I don't have time for this. I'd rip out the last, all but the last chord and I'd plug right into the amp and that'd be what I'd do for a year or two, you know? And so I'm, I'm all, I love amps, but I, I have this pedal board now that I've got a modeling amp on it so I can plug right into the PA and stuff. It's, so I'm experimenting with a lot of stuff, but it was fun that these guys that were like, oh, what's this, you know, flashing lights, what are you doing over here, fella? So that was cool. Um, I've also been putting some time in for a while on uh, doing a recording with some friends of mine, and I worked with them a year or two ago. The last project they did, maybe it's been almost two years or last year, I forget. Anyways, um, and I guess they liked what I did well enough that, you know, they they wanted me to come and help with this one, and, and uh, I've got a little bit more of a producer role in getting things arranged and how it's recorded and what we're doing, and that's been a great opportunity for me and a great stretch to, to be doing stuff that I've been working on, to be doing it for someone else and try to get things done in a good fashion for them. And hopefully we'll, I think it'll be a good, good project. It started out, we're in the, getting in the studio now. And so um, the basic starting tracks are just acoustic guitar for starters, right? And, um, brought up the the opportunity to talk a little about dynamics which I'm I'm a, I don't know it sounds foolish to say a big believer and like if I didn't believe would they not be there but the truth is I consider you know dynamic playing is what makes something that's pretty good start sounding pretty great you know and that's when I listen to great players that's something that we talk about in fact at that when I was at Tommy's Emmanuel's camp there we one of the master classes we were all talking and uh and I and I asked him you know what is your 
what volume is your basic volume that you're playing at, you know, compared to like your, your zero to 10 or whatever, where are you at? And his answer was, I think I, I don't know if I threw him off with that or how do you answer that? You know, I don't know. My medium is medium and my loud is loud, and, you know, which is kind of what he said in a way. But I, I watched over the days I was there. I really watched everybody. And I noticed that a lot of the players, they're not beating on their instruments. Even when it sounds so, the energy isn't in how hard you hit it. It's what's in your what's in your heart and your soul. And what, are you, what are you putting out, you know? So like this, this could sound, this could be an exciting kind of part, but notice how smooth it is. Well, I'm not toot my horn, I'm just talking about the, I'm trying to make it smooth, and, I'm, and I'll tell you what, this volume in my picking, it's important up and down the dynamics and also I tried to demonstrate that somewhat in my opening thing but I'm using real quickly I'll try not to go down the rabbit hole too far I'm using a, a Herco Gold which is a 50 50 I'm not sure what they're probably millimeters but um, I have a Herco Silver which is 75 <laughs> When I pick light, you can feel you can kind of feel that it's it's got a little more to it, a little more meat to it. But while that sounds like, well, why wouldn't I want to have more to it? You know what? It's not as smooth though. Same player, same basic. A little more defined where I get out the gold. A little less bass in the gold. That's something I heard Brian Sutton talk about in a video. How he had a, uh, he had a music stand full of picks. He was on his break practicing, right, in a studio, and he should have been eating his lunch probably. And... Maybe he should have been practicing. I don't know. As good as he is, I guess I'm not going to say anything one way or the other true. But um, a, a pile of picks, well, he was um, talking about, well, it's like a tone control. This pick sounds different. There's a Herco Gold. You heard a Herco Silver. Here's a, a Dunlop 88. A little woofier yet. Trying my darndest to just play the same. I'm at I'm at medium. One of the things that you learn in school, or one of the things I learned in school, in my little somewhere between my starting and my master's degree, was that you know a great player. It's easy to play loud. It's hard to play soft. Great players are the players that can go from. One of the things the band I played with it, uh, last weekend is our Cafe Days, Joe Ellard on acoustic guitar or bass and Jeff Densmore on percussion set, congas, whatever. And I, at that gig, was playing on electric or Gretsch, Tennessee Rose that almost sounds acoustic sometimes in a way. It feels more acoustic than, say, my Les Paul. But anyways, I'm digressing again. So, um... One of the things is that we can do a fade out and add something I've always, I, I take pride in that. that. You know, I can play soft enough to get a fade out without having to turn knobs and stuff, you know. And uh, so I value that. I'm just saying that. So there's a little woofier in 88. Here's a pick. Uh, one of my students gave me years ago a... Uh, can see this is a credit card or a, a medical card or something gave me a um, pick punch so whenever I have a, an expired card 
I punch out some picks. And, and you have to be careful that some of them have, like this one's a good example. Here's an old debit card that, you know, you can see it's got that raised lettering. So that's like, it just scratches and holds on the, so that's more of a novelty. But this one is quite thin. <laughs> get a nice smooth sound using that using a thinner pick i also have a fender medium i have some i bought some fender mediums recently so what i'm doing this week for for those of you that are following along I'm playing soft, I'm playing loud, I'm trying to be aware of the difference, I'm experimenting with different picks as I get ready for the different studio stuff I'm doing, and and um, I think there's a lot to that. I think great players, that's part of what they're doing. I'll say quickly, I'm still trying to get some golf in, and which is not easy. I'm not a great golfer, so, you know, I wonder why. I just started this year, but it's, it's fun, and it's not quite gone yet. Um, so there is that. I have a life. I'm trying to balance everything. I uh, Going over some of the comments for my first couple videos, I really appreciate it. In fact, right before this, I did this video today, someone uh, remarked about how much they like my meditation music, which I, I told them, I, I think that I take that as a kick in the behind. Time to get up and do some more of that. And so I got a lot of work to do on my YouTube channel. I know you probably noticed that. Um, so I've heard from some of my old students from like public school system. Hi, Miranda. You know, I, I, uh, I'm hearing from people. I got some great comments about the little stills thing I did kind of that sort of take on that. And I've not forgotten that someone asked about um, a little more, some of the specs on this guitar and that. And I may do a little bit more on this and, you know, as time goes on, I'm going to geek out a little on my guitars and my amps and whatever, you know. Um, so, again, thank you for showing up. I really appreciate you being here, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to have the opportunity that you'd, you'd let me in and talk to you a little bit. And uh, it's all good. Just remember, it's all good. Good week. <laughs>